I was very fortunate when I joined Capcom. We had um, uh, Mikami-san, who created Resident Evil. Uh, we had Inafune-san, who created Mega Man, uh, Onimusha, Lost Planet, and Dead Rising. Uh, had um, Funamizu-san, who was the producer that basically made Street Fighter II and famous, and he also created Monster Hunter before he left uh, Capcom, amazing parting present uh, to give them. Uh, and then we had, um, of course, Kamiya, Devil May Cry, Okami, Beautiful Joe, etc. It was an amazing time to be a gamer, to be working in Japan, and being surrounded by all these amazing people. And so I learned uh, so much. Um, I would say one of the differences uh, with the Japanese, and I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but a lot of times they get a get out of jail free card. The press, I think, sometimes treat them with additional reverence than they would like a Western creator. Partially it's going through that filter of translation and actually as an agent I can tell you having a translation filter can help you navigate some very difficult questions and conversations, especially if you have someone like me who's done PR and knows how you potentially can spruce up an answer or alter it in a way so it's culturalized to sound better uh, rather than what the base exact Japanese uh, text or uh, language was. So um, I think that they had a lot of leeway and got additional opportunities and uh, wiggle room potentially over their Western uh, counterparts. I do know they were incredibly overworked. Uh, at Capcom at one time, one producer was handling like five titles, not an executive producer either, whereas in the West you have like the UI producer. I mean, it's like there's like eight producers on one title. So there's that difference that comes with it. Uh, but in general, you know, in the, in the core of our hearts, we all just want to make the best game.